Hi, this is Mrs. Slater, and today we're going to prove that figures are special quadrilaterals, focusing on the rectangle kite, rhombus square, and isosceles trapezoid. The first one is proving a rectangle. What you would need to know is that you have a parallelogram and one right angle. So, for example, if you are given parallelogram in this picture, D, G, F, E, <clears throat> and then throughout the proof, you, have, you can prove that you have one right angle. Something's going to have to be given, either perpendicular and so on, that have to be given. Then you can say, <clears throat> if parallelogram and one right angle... then it is a rectangle. Okay, so keep that in mind. And let me bring this back here. Uh, one right angle should be there. So if you're given a parallelogram and you somehow, you'll get some more information. I'm not being very detailed here. But you'll get more information. Prove that one rectangle, one of the angles are right. Then, how you would write it is, if a parallelogram and one right angle, then it is a rectangle, or then the quadrilateral is a rectangle. Okay, the next one works very similarly. So, if you can get the diagonals congruent on a parallelogram, then you know that it's a rectangle. And again, your proof, what you're going to write would be, if parallelogram and diagonals congruent, Then the quadrilateral is a rectangle. So you would have to have both of those in the proof. Okay, and then for the last one, you do not need the fact that it's a parallelogram. So let's take a look at this one. If you can prove that all four angles of a quadrilateral are right, then you can say it's a, a rectangle. So you would say if, if the above statement, then rectangle. All right, and that about does it for rectangle. The next one is a kite. We can prove that a kite is indeed a kite by finding the two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent. So if you can prove if you can prove that AB is congruent to AD and BC is congruent to DC, then you'll be able to say that you have a kite. Okay, and then the second one for a kite is the diagonal property, and it is saying if the diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of the other, then you can say it is a kite. So you would have to prove that AC, prove that AC is a perpendicular bisector of B. Okay, and then of course it would be an if then form. If one diagonal is perpendicular bisector to the other, then the quadrilateral is a kite. Okay, the rhombus is um, also kind of like the kite, where if you, there are certain properties that you have to have the parallelogram first, um, and the two situations that that happens is if you have a pair of consecutive sides congruent, so like CD, sorry about that. So if CD is congruent to BC, you can say that if uh, parallelogram and a pair of consecutive sides congruent, then rhombus. Um, you can do that for any of the sides. It just doesn't have to be those two, but any pair of consecutive sides congruent. The other is a parallelogram. If parallelogram and a diagonal bisects the two angles, then you have a rhombus. And then the last one, excuse me, the second to the last one, is going to be the side definition, so now you do not need the fact that it's a parallelogram. But if you can get all four sides of a quad congruent, then you can say it's a rhombus. And then the last one, if you can get the diagonals or perpendicular bisectors of each other, then you're going to have a rhombus. All right, so proving a square, the uh, definition is going to be how you can prove it. If you can prove that a quadrilateral is both a rhombus and a rectangle, then you can say that it is a square, or you have proven that it is a square. For a trapezoid, you would only need 
a pair of opposite sides parallel. And the last one, you would need a trapezoid plus any of the following things. First one, non-parallel sides are congruent. So again, just I want to emphasize what this is going to look like in a proof. So you would have to say if trapezoid and non-parallel sides congruent, then the quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. Same thing with the second one. If it's trapezoid and lower or upper base angles are congruent, you'd be able to say that it's a isotrapezoid. And then the last one, if the diagonals are congruent. So you have to have a trapezoid and diagonals congruent in order to say it's an isosceles trapezoid. Now let's use some of the properties that we have just seen to determine what type of quadrilateral we have. Before I begin, I'd like to go ahead and give each point a vertex uh, point and then go ahead and do a, a little graph off to the side just to get an idea of what it looks like. And then I begin finding the slopes because that's going to help determine if it is a parallelogram or not. So I first start with the slope of AB and I want to also find the slope of BD and so on. So go ahead and push pause and figure those out and then we'll go over the answers. Okay, so we now know that this parallelogram or this quadrilateral is a parallelogram because if opposite sides parallel, then we have a parallelogram. Okay, now you also can eliminate a few things because we know B, based off of uh, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. A, B, there is no right angle right here or in any of them. So that means that it is not a rectangle or a square. So those are out. And then the last thing we got to think about is a rhombus, because that also could be a parallelogram. So we check for consecutive sides to see if con two consecutive sides are congruent. All right. So we're going to find the distance of AB. And we'll also find the distance of BD. And if they're congruent, then we have a rhombus. If they are not, then we're going to stay with a parallelogram. So go ahead and push pause and solve that. And um, I also apologize for the lack of room. You may have to get another piece of paper out for this. So if you got the distance of AB is equal to 6 and the distance of BD is square root of 8, you are correct, which means that it cannot be a rhombus. So then the most descriptive name of this that we can come up with is a parallelogram. All right, go ahead and push pause and start the next one. As I mentioned on the last one, I would like to get everything labeled, a little picture off to the side, and then first measure to see if we have a parallelogram or not. So go ahead and find the slopes, and then we'll check answers. So what you may have already discovered is not only is it a parallelogram, but more specifically, it has to be a rectangle or a square. So based off of our properties, um, we are going to decide, well, is it a rectangle or a square? And um, if we can find consecutive sides congruent, then we'll know that it's a square. So we have to do the distance formula a couple times. So the distance from A to B would be the square root of negative 4 minus negative 2 squared plus 0 minus 1 squared, which then would equal 4 plus 1. So you get the square root of 5. And then if you find the distance of a consecutive side, like AD, it would be negative 4 minus a negative 3 plus 0 minus a negative 2. And then that would be 1. That would be 4. So you get the square root of 5. So because these two are exactly the same, we know the most descriptive name for this is a square. You've got parallel sides. Opposite sides are parallel, so it made it a parallelogram. You have opposite reciprocal slopes opposite reciprocal slope, so that means that there were right angles at each corner, 
And then to specify if it's a rectangular square, we found the distance of two consecutive uh, segments. Okay, so the next one, go ahead and label and draw that up, and then we'll go over that one tomorrow. Find the most specific quadrilateral that that could be named. And then if you are a PSGA student, you may stop here, but if you are an honor student, you need to go on to the next slide. Okay, so go ahead and take the time to uh, label your picture and go ahead and get started without my help, and then you'll see the answer after. So you should have all the givens listed, your picture labeled, and what a bisector will help us with is angle 1 and angle 2 are going to be congruent to each other. And um, also, if AB is congruent to BC, that means if sides and angles. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and label this um, angle by C. I'm going to label that 3, and we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because if sides, then angles. And that is helpful because now we can say that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent because of the transitive property. And that would be pulled from steps 4 and 5. And because um, one or 2 and 3 are congruent, we can now say that BC, BC is parallel to AD because if alternate interior angles congruent then parallel lines. Okay, now we can conclude because if you recall the definition of trapezoid says if you can get a pair of opposite sides parallel then you have a trapezoid. So let's use that on our last statement. ABCD is a trapezoid because if one pair of opposite sides are parallel, then trapezoid. And this concludes our lesson for today.